In this episode, I'm going to install an additional spindle mount that I made. And I have a couple of pointers if you like to make your own. I am also trying to validate if this really made a difference or not by using my iPhone and a vibration analysis tool. Okay, so a quick note to the design. For one, once it's clamped onto the spindle, there's a 30 second of an inch or one millimeter gap in between the two halves. And number two is that I left about three hundredths of a millimeter in diameter for the back so that the spindle fits in really well and that was too tight. Actually, I had to dremel out the, um, the portion right here, otherwise it would just be too tight on the spindle. I left a tenth of a millimeter in diameter at the front portion of it and that, I think, worked out great. Now, this is an additional clamp, okay? It is not meant as the main clamp. The main clamp needs to have mounting bolts that are independent from the clamping bolts. So we want to mount the bracket and that is one aspect of the holding and then the clamping is another. In this bracket, both of it is combined because the bolts come out the back. So it's really just the additional top bracket, okay? All right. So for the before and after test, I used a single flute cutter, eight millimeter in diameter, 15,000 RPM, two millimeter depths of cut and two millimeter step over. And I also used this tool here. Now I was sure this would introduce some vibration to my machine. And for one, it's a one inch tool. It has the wrong inserts in there for steel. So it squeezes the material off. And I have machined the shaft of this, so it's non-balanced. And I know that my machine uh, has vibrations using that tool. So I wanted to see if that could make a difference before and after. So chatter on the machine has to do with vibration. And I can tell you that every aspect of your machine has an influence. And there's something called resonance frequency and that changes with everything on your machine. The mass that you, the spindle RPM, the tool, the uh, flute on the tool, the uh, geometry of the flute, um, the work holding, the mass of the part. There's, there's tons and tons of parameters that all change the harmonics that your system or your machine responds. Now, the phone that I'm going to use here for measuring, actually, it measures the G forces that it is seeing through his acceleration sensor. Now, G forces. Let's talk about that for a sec. So let's say we have a system that is like a, a big branch with leaves in the wind and you see it doing motions like this. So the amplitude and the motion is relatively large and the acceleration is pretty low. Now, if you take a branch, actually clamp it to the table and you hit the end of the branch, it goes boring. Now we have a system that is actually having a low amplitude and a high frequency and the motion will be much less. Now, if you think of chatter on a tool, 
Low motion versus large motion? Well, I would like to have lower motion. It probably has higher frequency and leaves less artifacts on the surface, but also it will have higher g-forces. So why I'm explaining that is, if we look at the chart, and the chart is going to show us higher g values, this is actually an increased of the stiffness of the system. That's a good thing, okay? So um, I struggled with the understanding for that for a moment too. I mounted the bracket, looked at the data, and then saw, oh, well that went the other way. No, it actually went the right way. The stiffness of the system has improved and therefore it did make a positive impact. It did not make a change for the eight millimeter, two by two millimeter cutting. That actually before and after was exactly the same, but on the large one inch tool, that basically um, where I took the 2.2 millimeter off the top surface, there was a big difference. Actually, the G-forces doubled. Um, and so the system stiffness here increased uh, a lot and okay if you made it all the way to the end of the video then i have a small teaser for you right here this is a prototype i'm working on and it is i think one step up from the fog buster or the chinese knockoffs because they all use a needle valve and that is always problematic it's something i don't like on the machine so this one it does not have a needle valve and it works better so i hope i can show you that in the next upcoming video until then take care bye